This is for the Ethics Review class at Parker University. The seventh licensing board rule requires proper diligence in the practice of chiropractic. Essentially, this is a very broad rule that's going to require compliance with the standards of care, and it allows the board to discipline doctors who violate the standards of care, even though somebody, regardless of whether the patient was injured. So it basically takes situations that would ordinarily be a malpractice lawsuit and makes it possible for the state board to uh, handle those claims and discipline the doctor. They can't award money to the patient, but they can certainly discipline the doctor. So it starts off with a very general statement. You can be disciplined for failing to conform to the generally accepted standards of care within the chiropractic profession in Texas regardless of whether there's an actual injury. Now, the two problems or the two concerns I have there is, of course, first, nobody really knows what the generally accepted standards of care are. Now, the board has gone on to list some examples, but it's listed only as examples, which means if even if there's something the doctor has done that's not on this list of violations, they could still be disciplined for violating the, the rule that requires proper diligence. Uh, the first possibility is, is down here at number A, uh, failing to assess and evaluate a patient's status. The board doesn't come out and require that a doctor make a diagnosis, but a doctor needs to be performing some kind of examination or evaluation of the patient before they proceed with treatment. Uh, of course, providing treatment that the doctor has not been trained to provide. Uh, I think attending a weekend seminar on a new technique probably is not enough. Uh, doctors need to be looking to be sure they obtain enough experience at handling new techniques to do them effectively and safely for the patient. Uh, delegating to somebody who is not qualified. We'll talk more about delegation when we talk about employees, but the doctor needs to re remember that even though they may have someone else do the actual work, the doctor is still responsible for the results of that work, and the doctor is still responsible that that work be performed lawfully. Uh, not surprisingly, it's a lack of pop proper diligence to cause, permit, or allow physical injury to a patient. But it can also include impairing the dignity or the safety of a patient. So even though an injury has not occurred, putting the patient in a situation that puts them at risk where they're not necessarily safe could result in a disciplinary violation. Impairing the dignity of a patient is certainly a very broad statement. Now, we'll talk more about sexual harassment under one of the other rules, but certainly getting into an argument with the patient, fighting with the patient, or screaming at a patient, or being unprofessional with the patient, could be construed as impairing the dignity of the patient and you open yourself up to a risk of claims. The next item is abandonment. Uh, anytime you're terminating a patient for whatever reason, doctors should be careful to give the patient enough notice that the patient may find another doctor to continue the care without exposing themselves to any injury. Now, the reality in the chiropractic world is it's very easy to find another chiropractor in most metropolitan areas. Even in most small towns, it's fairly easy and quick to find another chiropractor to provide continuing treatment. As a result, the damages from abandonment are usually very small. The injury to the patient is not worth a lot of money. So you almost never see malpractice claims for abandonment against chiropractors. Now, you do see them against other kinds of doctors, but rarely against chiropractors. Um, and the reason you don't see them against chiropractors is, is it is expensive to pursue the claims. It will usually require hiring an expert witness to show that the patient was injured and the injury was caused by the abandonment. Uh, and that's all expensive. And in exchange for it, the, the attorney may recover only a very small amount of damages because the patient may have had to go for a day or two or maybe even a week without chiropractic care, which probably is not going to result in much injury to the patient. It's not a very valuable injury. 
But on the other hand, it's very easy for a patient to file an abandonment complaint with the Texas Board. It doesn't mean the patient's going to be paid any money, but it doesn't require the patient to hire an expert witness. There's chiropractors on the board who can make those evaluations. It doesn't require the patient to pay any kind of filing fee. The patient simply needs to contact the state board, provide the information to the board, and it allows the board to then go forward with pursuing this claim. So be careful about terminating patients, even though the risk of a malpractice claim may be almost non-existent, the risk of a complaint to the state board certainly exists. The uh, uh, rule on proper diligence also gives two more examples. Uh, failing to timely refer a patient if the patient requires treatment outside the chiropractic scope of practice or the patient needs services or treatment that exceeds the, the doctor's license or excuse me, the doctor's education, training or experience. So even though the service may be within chiropractic uh, or the scope of chiropractic, if the doctor isn't trained to provide that service and that's what the patient needs, the doctor needs to make a timely referral. Uh, and then lastly, we talked a little bit about delegation and one of the other exceptions. There's also a very specific rule that says the doctor is required to provide direct supervision to students and other persons when they're delegating. So be sure you, you provide that care appropriately. So bottom line of this is, is the state board has taken the standards for a malpractice case, uh, which is essentially violating the standards of care, providing care that's underneath or less than the standard of care for the profession. And that's the basis usually for a malpractice case, but the board has taken that and they now have the ability to expand it in discipline doctors, even though nobody was injured. And even though the damages may have been so small that nobody will ever pursue a malpractice case. So it's important to be sure that you are aware of the standards of care and that you meet those standards of care uh, by providing proper evaluations of patients and by avoiding abandonment of patients.